Okay, once again we're in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 7. And we'll be starting there as we're going to read the first 12 verses in Revelation 12, verse 7. The title of our message today is War in Heaven. So let's begin to read. It says, starts right off with that. And there was war in heaven. So we can see that in Revelation. They say, oh, heaven doesn't have wars. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's where the big one is. <clears throat> and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And we found out the dragon is Satan. And the dragon and his angels fought back. So it wasn't an easy thing. There was a real war going on. But he was not strong enough. And they lost their place in heaven. Verse 9. The great dragon was hurled down. That ancient serpent, the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God. Who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down? They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, as the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury because he knows that his time is short. That area in Revelation right there shows why there's so many problems going on. Why we're having problems with our own lives. Particularly, we don't know that we're a target. We are a target for the devil as he's thrown down here. Where do we read about Satan and his angels being hurled to earth? Right here in Revelation that we just read. And where do we read about the effect of Satan and his angels being hur hurled to earth? throughout the entire Bible. So that could be confusing with some people too. The Bible begins with him tempting Adam and Eve and it ends with him being finally tossed into the lake of fire. So you see that he's clear through the Bible. He's all the way from the beginning to the end. Last time we saw where the dragon wore seven crowns on his head. You remember that? We saw that those were the seven empires of the world from Egypt until now in the so-called revised Roman Empire. So from Adam and Eve through the seven empires of the Old Testament until now, the effect of the dragon is felt all the way through. He has communication with God in heaven as he did in the story of Job. So we see that. But soon, no more. He and his angels were doomed, are doomed, and woe to the earth because he is very, very mad about this. We sometimes get centered on the problems we can see. It's the ones we cannot see that we should be concerned about. What did Paul say in Ephesians 6.12? Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world. And this is the important part, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Spiritual forces of evil in heaven. This warfare that's going on. Paul tells us to put on the full armor of God. Why? If God's in charge, why do we have to put on a full armor? Because Satan is angry and ready to destroy all of God's work if it were possible. We can't afford to let up a minute. I don't care how strong we think we are. We're seeing in scripture where God is telling us, put on the armor. Prepare yourself for it. because the devil is roaming around. This is like he's ready to devour us at any moment, any weak time. He's ready to go after us. We're not playing with something that isn't something we should be concerned about. He's angry and he wants revenge. Daniel tells of, a, of the angel Gabriel telling him that the prince of Persia had detained him until Michael came to help him. That's our next verse. It's Daniel uh, chapter 10, verse 13. And it says, But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, 
one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. The prince of the Persian kingdom represents Satan's power. He was in charge. Remember, he's got those seven crowns. If Gabriel, now you've heard enough about Gabriel. Look at all the work that Gabriel did for God. If Gabriel, the archangel of God, could be detained, then surely we can have problems as well. This is what I'm looking at. Remember, Satan is prince of this world and wore the seven crowns of all the empires since King Nimrod to indicate that he has been doing this for a long time and is still at work. Even with Jesus, in Matthew 4, 1 through 11, that we read a lot, the devil tried to tempt the Son of God. He assumed that he had the power to do such a thing. He could actually turn the Son of God around. We only have what God allows us to have. Even Jesus, at that time, you'll remember, answered the devil with the word of God, the scripture, in reply to the devil's temptations. It seems to be part of the plan of God to give us that an opposing force always in our lives. Now, that is a fact. You know, why are we going through this? Why is this happening? Why does this happen to them, uh, to those, ta da 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 and we hear this all the time. Well, if God is the one who allows things to happen, then it must be his plan to give us that opposing force. Because to overcome makes us stronger. We hear this all the time. Also, one is almost useless without the other. Now, just think about that. Let's look at it on a scientific level. <laughs> Opposing force. One is useless without the other. Like, if there was no gravity, why would we need feet? We'd be floating around. We'd be like fish. You know, we don't need any feet. So without gravity, we wouldn't need feet. Or if there was no purpose for things to stay in place on Earth, why would we need gravity? The gravity is there to hold everything in place, right? That's what it's supposed to be. So we need feet so that we got something to walk on. So the opposing force of the adversary should make us stronger in our faith, not weaker. And God seems to want that there. There's temptations out there. You have temptations in the club. We're getting these temptations. And we say, oh, God, I'm a Christian. Why do you put these, well, allow these things to be in front of me? Because I'm so weak. <laughs> He says, I know you are. That's why they're in front of you. <laughs> I'm going to keep throwing them out there. This will make you stronger. The more you oppose this opposing force, the, the stronger you're going to get as you're pushing these things away. You know, Then you get stronger in, in life. But if you're weak and just allow them to take you over, then you're just, you'll, you'll be defeated in that way. When God becomes the only strength man accepts, then the oppressor will be removed from earth permanently. Until that time, God's going to allow this to happen. So I've heard a lot of people say, why, why Satan? If he's lost the war and all this, why does God allow him to still stay around? And at the very end, after a thousand years, allow him to come back for a short time. Why is that? It seems to me it's a good plan. Let's see now who can still do this. Who can oppose the devil? Who is on my side? Much more happened at Christ's birth, death, and resurrection than most people realize. A war between the forces of good and evil was underway. With Christ's resurrection, Satan's ultimate defeat was assured. Some believe that Satan, uh, Satan's fall to earth took place at Jesus' resurrection or ascension, and that the 1,260 days or three and a half last years is a symbolic way of referring to the time between Christ's first and second comings. Others say that Satan's defeat will occur in the middle of the literal seven-year tribulation period. There's a lot of theories out there. But whatever the case, what we must remember is that Christ is victorious. There's no way that this is going to change around. He's already victorious. Satan has already been defeated because of Christ's death on the cross. That's why the cross is so important. And we forget the cross so much. <laughs> and I believe that's the devil's work. You know, the cross is where we, we have victory over the devil. And we should always have that in mind. The name Satan means accuser. He actively looks for people to attack He's roaming around looking. 
Satan likes to pursue people who are vulnerable in their faith, who are spiritually weak, or who are isolated from other believers. Haven't you seen that? (laughs) Haven't you seen people just getting crushed? And when you're wondering why are they under such such oppression, then you start to look at their, their walk. You start to look behind the scenes at where they're at. And the only time that they are with Christians or come to church or, or are seeking God is when they are just so totally beaten up that that's the only place they've got to go. But where is their walk in the meantime? Are they reading the Bible? Are they praying? Do they stay with their Christian friends? No, they're spiritually weak. They're vulnerable. They've allowed themselves to be open. And when Satan's looking for someone to pick on, he's, oh, there's one. Yeah, he really thinks he's a Christian, doesn't he? I can see him day and night. Oh, I'm going to have fun with this guy, you know. And he starts to go after him. This guy's having all kinds of problems. All of a sudden, oh, he's got to call the pastor. Oh, he's got to get, and they come into church or something. And it's like, oh, tears and tears. Oh, isn't that wonderful? He's really getting broken in the spirit. No, he should have been broken a long time ago. He's spiritually weak. Only th- he just wants what can, he can get. If he can make some money on a deal, then he'll make, a money, make money on the deal. If it's good for him to be a part of the church, he'll be a part of the church. But he doesn't seek the things of God. He doesn't let God take over his life. He doesn't grow. We're living in the last days, and Satan's work has become more intense. One of the reasons that God allows Satan to work evil and bring temptation is so that those who pretend to be Christ's followers will be weeded out from Christ's true believers. Knowing that the last and great confrontation with Jesus is near, Satan is trying desperately to recruit as great an enemy of force as possible for his final battle. Let's finish the chapter now, chapter 12, verse 13 through 18 in Revelation. When the dragon saw that he had been hurled to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. The woman was given the two wings of a great eagle so that she might fly to the place prepared for her in the desert, where she would be taken care of for a time, times, and a half a time out of the serpent's reach. Then from his mouth the serpent spewed water like a river to overtake the woman and sweep her away with the torrent. But the earth helped the woman by opening its mouth and swallowing the river that the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. I think it's so neat. I get excited with that. You think, is, is God in charge or isn't, is he in charge? You know, here's the devil. He's going after this woman, you know, particularly wants her. He, and we know the woman is Israel. Okay, particularly wants to st- destroy Israel. And so he's, he's, and he makes this big flood going out. Is God in charge? Yeah, he opens up the earth and swallows up the water. Then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to make war against the rest of her offspring, those who obey God's commandments and hold to the testimony of Jesus. See, this is happening. Do it again. The 18th, I don't have it here. Oh, is it? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't take that out of there. The 18th, the reason there was a confusion there is the in some Bibles, the 18th is, is in 12, chapter 12. In other Bibles, the 18th verse is in chapter 13. So I, I'm leaving it for next week <laughs> where he's, he's going to be standing on the shore as the dragon is standing on the shore. While the woman represents faithful Jews and the child represents Christ in the scriptures here that we just read, the rest of her children are probably all believers who have turned to God during this time and are struggling. But not the church because the church has already been raptured. But there's salvation going on during the tribulation period, during that time. And so when the dragon isn't having any any luck with the that remnant of Jews that God is protecting, and they've run off to eat him. When he sees that, then he turns on, and it's anybody, you know, oh, you want to go with God, and it's bad enough at that time. Can you imagine? 
<laughs> what during that time what the people will be going through that realize uh, and then the devil's going to make it even harder paul says we are in a spiritual battle john says that the war is still being waged so we know it's still going on that's why all the stuff we don't hear it it seems very peaceful up here at the lake but if we could hear into the heavenly realms, it would be a, a lot of commotion going on, I think. The war is still going on, according to John. But the outcome has already been determined. Those who belong to Christ have gone into battle on God's side, and he has guaranteed them victory. When I was in Guam in the Air Force, it was after World War II, not World War I, as some people might think, but it was World War II, it was amazing to me because they still had Japanese soldiers hiding up in the high areas of, in Guam, up in the bushes, because they thought that the war was still on. <laughs> and they were up there and they sneak into camp and they try to cause as much trouble as they can and they couldn't, they couldn't get them. They just had to wait till they practically died off, you know, because they thought, they really totally thought that Japan was winning this thing and they were still fighting. And I think about that every time I see this, you know, that the war is still on to uh, the devil, but it's been won, and there are still those that are out there fighting it. Let's close with Romans 8:35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written... For your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us from him.